Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And now for part two of this video where I'll be inking Blackstone or I'm inking Blackstone inside Sketchbook Pro. And all I use here is the hard pencil tool and I just go around the edging of them and try to redefine the glares, the light source, things like that. Just kind of clean up the line work overall. I just use the hard pencil tool which you can find settings on that in some of my other videos, uh, inking in Sketchbook Pro, stuff like that. And it's a, it's a really nice tool. It's got a great fluidity to it, and it feels a lot like I'm using a brush, so I, I really dig it. And you see I kind of trace around the outlines of the overall shapes, then fill them in. The only bad thing is it leaves little bits of artifacts. And then I go back through and paint little white highlights like you see there. So sometimes if something fills in and... You know, it's just quicker to paint in the details of white. I, I definitely take advantage of that. And on a character like this, it makes total sense because he's predominantly a shiny black material. So it's a lot easier to fill in those details with a, uh, a white ink or whatever. So just going through there and uh, cleaning up those highlights and trying to get, you know, I do a little bit of line breaks into the uh, glare, kind of build a little bit more effect in there. And I do a lot of playing around, and one of the things I do when uh, inking something like this is I just create a, you know, you'll see by the end of it I end up with all these layers and I have to merge them down. And I talk a lot about that in all my videos, but I, I use the layer system a lot to experiment. And, you know, not like it's a big deal, you could just erase back to a previous, you know, section of where you're at. But the uh, the layers make it really, you know, nice and easy, so... And trying to define a little bit of the line weight, I usually go back and do my line weight again at the very end because uh, I feel like line weight's really important to make a character come off the page. So if you just have a basic line around your entire perimeter of your character, it's going to look very flat, very boring. So you got to try to really look at that and go, where can I put the thicker line weight, you know, generally it's at the bottom or the recessed area away from light, you know, the shadow area, but there's more to it than that. The other, the other thing is to do a thicker line weight around the objects that are closer. Like, so the part of the tentacles, you'll see that I try to incorporate a little bit thicker line weight later on to make them look like they're closer to the camera. So just keep that in mind. Line weight is very, very important in my opinion. And one of the cool things about Sketchbook Pro and inking is that it's really fast. It doesn't lag. It's, it's a, you know, very responsive. And I think that's important in inking, at least for me. My, to me, I'm more of an artist as far as or my art style is more in tune with drawing than inking. I like inking, but I don't feel as confident with it like I do with my line art, just sketching and drawing. So that's why you see me in this video. You see I put stuff down and then it... You know, I take it away. Uh, I keep doing that because I'm really looking at it and trying to make the uh, connection of whether or not it's it's viable, if it looks good in the art or not. And so I don't have the confidence there, like say, you know, a really seasoned inker that would just know right where they want to see their lines and their their glares and their shadows and all that. So I have to play around with it for a bit, but the responsiveness to Sketchbook Pro really lends to that because I'm not fighting the software to experiment or stay stay in the zone is the way I like to refer to it as. Basically stay in the moment of creating. The more that the software or the computer lags or gets in the way, it pulls you out of that creative stream that you're trying to get or flow or whatever. And you really need to stay there. You know, you need to get comfortable and then just stay there. And then that's where you're going to get your best work. And again, these are all just my opinions, you know, take it as you will. You know, I'm sure you got your own take on all the stuff. And, and always feel free to share that in the uh, comments section below. It's always good for other artists that are viewing the stuff to get more than just my perspective. More than just my narrow perspective. <laughs> So here, uh, one of my least favorite parts of doing the character, but I, I feel it, it adds some uh, depth or whatever. Uh, I ended up texturing this alien overly striated, if that's the right word. But, 
you know, it's got all these little texture lines and everything. And I thought that was a nice uh, offset to the character because he's a smooth, you know, character. You got this alien that's attached to his back that, you know, he doesn't want there, obviously. And it's uh, it's grotesque almost and weird looking, um, which I don't know that Blackstone is a vain character or anything like that. But it's it's just the idea that it, it adds a little bit of offset to the look of the character, which I thought was nice. But... It takes a you know a long time to sit there and texture like this, and I need to probably develop a brush and a different way of doing it. But you know, I thought it was cool, so that's the way I went with it. And now I just every time I get to that part, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fun. Here comes the carpal tunnel. But uh, it's fun, you know, to to do. It's just not probably my it's probably my least favorite part of the character to detail because I, you know it's more like work when you do this stuff, but. Um, but you know, I think it adds a unique look to them. So that's why I wanted to do it. But the other thing that I could do if I wanted to do a nice, easy cheat and get around it is just, you know, I could have made the character, the uh, alien on his back more smooth and just like maybe like a smooth, slimy texture with just a couple little bumps or something. And it would have been a lot easier to detail. So at any rate, it is what it is, you know, so I'm just sitting there doing that now with this I'm using the same brush in fact I think I use the same brush the entire time the only thing that you see when I'm scribbling off to the side there it's not that I'm changing the brush well you can see because the toolbar up there stays on the same hard pencil tool I'm changing the size of the brush interactively with the bracket keys and I'm just checking it off to the side and that's really it I feel like the brush itself has such a nice thick to thin line work to it that I can pretty much create a lot of different effects with it. I can do some really nice cross hatching and feathered lines, which is pretty much my favorite thing to uh, to do my shading with. So, yeah, I, I really like the pencil, the hard pencil tool for inking on this. I think it's very versatile. Now, does that mean that I shouldn't experiment and try other brushes? Of course not. I need to add more tools to the toolbox, so to speak. But it just it works so well, and I can move so quick quickly with it I think this whole thing in real time was maybe an hour hour and a half I, I don't know it could have been two hours I actually lose track when I'm inking I kind of zone out but um which I really shouldn't I should probably time every job that I do but now here I'm using the ruler tool really love that tool it's it's such a great addition I wish things like I don't mean to knock it but like photoshop and I love photoshop but I wish photoshop had that type of tool and all the all the perspective tools that are inside manga or sorry sketchbook pro here whoops uh are fantastic you know they they're probably the best i've seen second would be manga studio which i really enjoy manga studio too but the perspective tools in this and the ruler tool are so quick and easy to grab and, and use you almost have to set the other ones up in manga studio a bit longer and i'm not knocking that software because that's what predominantly the Blackstone comic is drawn in right now but something about Sketchbook Pro is just a little bit quicker and to me you know speeds everything on this stuff I, I gotta be able to produce it faster or I won't be able to get these books out because I do this entirely on my own I don't have a team of artists working with me to produce you know the Blackstone comic so if it's not fast and functional then I I kind of have to veer away from it even if it's a Maybe even if it's an overall better end quality, I have to weigh that with the amount of time it takes to produce. So, and that's unfortunate. That's just, you know, one of those hard facts of life and and trying to be a professional artist. It's, uh, you know, you got to keep your eye on the clock, which I would love to just be some studio artist that threw paint at a canvas and got some big check out of the deal and then didn't have to ever look at the clock again. But that's just not the way that... uh my lifestyle works right now so I'm a slave to the clock I even thought about getting myself a little time clock for the for the studio and then punching in and I'm just kidding that would suck at any rate so just doing some more line work and having fun with this little alien dude I do have a plan for him in the future that will uh, make him a little easier to draw but I can't talk about that because it would ruin part of the storyline, so sorry folks, you got to buy the book. Which there's only one right now, but I'm I'm 
about halfway through book two. This is actually a pinup for book two. And I'm picking up steam. I just had to get a lot of things uh, out of the way, personal matters and business matters and all that, so so that I could dedicate more to a Blackstone comic. So, And based on the way my season works for the way that uh, I produce work for people, I get a lot busier in the summer for some reason, so I'll have more time to dedicate to this as we get closer to fall and winter. So I need to actually try to pump out a couple books in that time, and that way I can really get the story in front of people and see how you guys are going to react to it and get your feedback and, you know, just kind of let it evolve naturally through that process. I've got a lot of different directions I'd like to take the character, but I need uh, I need people to appreciate it and buy the book and support it. So, And by the way, you can support this book and this channel on Patreon. The link will be below, so I appreciate any support that you can do. It always helps, big or small, of, of course. So here's another thing I like to do is start spotting in the blacks. Uh, there's not much, obviously, I, I have to more worry about the highlights on the character himself, but this part where I spot in some blacks really brings the art out, so it's important to do. I'm back to the ruler there, but you'll see that through the whole bottom of the gun, under the hand, that I, I keep adding those little shadows and texturing, and it's real important to do that. I, I've always shied away from that in my art, and it's unfortunate because... I'm starting to see now that that's really what propels your art off the page. It's not all the fancy little cross hatching and, and uh, feathering as much as I enjoy doing that. It's it's really getting good with those solid blacks and those the spotting of the, the black shadows. So, you know, and I've got some shadowing videos on my channel that you can check out. I know that seems to be overall a struggle for all of us as artists, as comic book illustrators. It's like the... The use of shadows seems to be one of the trickiest things. It's right up there with drawing good faces at hard angles or something, you know, there, there are hands foreshortened or whatever. There's all these hard topics, obviously, but spotting uh, shadows properly is really tricky, and I fail at it. I'm not saying I'm some great at it at this point, but acknowledging the fact that I need to be better at it is step one, right? And now step two is lots of practice and uh, getting comfortable with it. And there, again, I'm using the layers to kind of help me out, figure something out since I didn't draw that in. So I sketch it in, even in ink, tone the layer down, and then go back over and clean up the lines. And it's the single greatest thing about doing stuff like this is the fact that you can use those layers in a number of ways, but just to really help your process and your art, you know, come together a lot quicker and a lot nicer, so... So yeah, just filling that in. That hard pencil just does a really nice, uh, easy line work. I can get some nice clean lines. And obviously I am using a Wacom Cintiq, so I've got a lot more control. I actually won't ink on pretty much anything else. Um, I use it in Tools 5 and things like that, but I use that more for sketching and digital painting. And I pretty much just ink on the Cintiq because I haven't found a method that is comparable to getting the lines nearly as fast and is fluid so it just makes sense so now I'll go back through and touch up my line weight one more time and just try to really you know again make them jump off the page now a background would also help and I'm not sure quite sure what I'm gonna do with the background so I wanted to ink the character get this video to you guys you know give me feedback and then I might uh, might do the the background in with the color. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do there. So that'll conclude this video. So I thank you for watching. There'll be a high res copy of this on my Patreon page for uh, Patreon supporters of the Blackstone comic. So you can download that there. And uh, as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon.